But never fear, if GMOs do destroy DNA and create all kinds of hereditary problems down the line for future generations, there is a jaw-dropping breakthrough in genetics that might fix that. For the first time, scientists are able to engineer any part of the human genome with extreme precision by using a revolutionary new technique called CRISPR, which has been likened to editing the individual letters on any chosen page of an encyclopedia without creating spelling mistakes. The landmark development means it is now possible to make the most accurate and detailed alterations to any specific position on the DNA of the 23 pairs of human chromosomes without introducing unintended mutations or flaws. The technique is so accurate that scientists believe it will soon be used to treat incurable viruses, such as HIV, or currently untreatable genetic disorders. It might also be used controversially to correct gene defects in human IVF embryos. Now, many people think that messing with the DNA is just one step toward eugenics, whereby they're gonna get rid of the undesirables and their undesirable traits. Well, surprisingly, this move toward population reduction has been met with rounds of applause. Which so-called dangerous idea do you each think would have the greatest potential to change the world for the better if it were implemented? Dan, let's start with you. Oh, oh my God. One. That's, you gotta give us a minute to think about that. Uh, population control, there's too many goddamn people on the planet. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a... You know, I'm, uh, I'm pro-choice. I believe that women should have the right to control their bodies. Sometimes in my darker moments, I'm anti-choice. I think abortion should be mandatory for about 30 years. <laughs> With more on that is Paul Joseph Watson. That's right, Leanne. And think about it this way. Imagine if a prominent anti-abortion activist had called for all homosexuals to be killed. Just imagine the level of outrage that that would cause. And yet Dan Savage, so far at least, has basically been given a free pass. Note how the audience enthusiastically applauded his advocacy for forced population reduction. If they're so eager to see it happen, how about they put themselves and their children first in line for the culling? You know, that's not going to happen. But Savage is only advocating the same concept that current White House science advisor John P. Holdren promoted in his 1977 book, Ecoscience, forced abortions of the type ruthlessly imposed by the communist Chinese government. We've all seen the stories, women being kidnapped off the streets, out of their own beds, beaten up, dragged to state clinics, forcibly injected with abortion-inducing drugs, the babies forcibly aborted, thrown in a bucket. That's the kind of policy being advocated here. But aside from the moral outrage, Savage's argument is based on the debunked myth of overpopulation. Half the world is already below the, the 2.1 fertility replacement rate. Virtually all major European countries are well below it, as is America. We're actually not having enough children to replace ourselves at the current rate as it is. According to the UN's own figures, population will peak at around 9 billion in 30 to 40 years and drastically decline soon after. This demographic transition, which is what they refer to it as, actually means that the real threat facing humanity by the end of the century will be underpopulation, not overpopulation. So Savage's advocacy for mandatory abortion is not only morally repugnant, it's based on the completely fraudulent premise of overpopulation, which is a conspiracy theory constantly invoked by the Malthusian and eugenicist-driven establishment, as well as people like Ted Turner, who's got five kids but says that the one-child policy should be imposed worldwide, to attack our fertility rights and eviscerate our quality of life as they pursue their post-industrial revolution, which at its heart lay the debunked myth, the religion, the pseudoscience of overpopulation. Now back to Leanne McAdoo in the InfoWars studios.